So when you're starting up your business, there's probably some business expenses that you're going to incur. You might need to buy a computer, you might need to buy office supplies, you probably need to register for like a business license or an LLC. So oftentimes I get the question, how do you record that in QuickBooks? So I'm gonna go through that step by step today in QuickBooks and let you know how to record that as a journal entry. Um, so you can use this either for your own bookkeeping business you're starting or for one of your clients. And if we haven't met before, my name is Morgan. My website is findpoints.biz and I make a bookkeeping video every single week. So make sure to subscribe to my channel and a thumbs up helps this video out a lot as well. And this whole month, I am going to be doing a series on business startups. So specifically starting your bookkeeping business and a few tips and tricks and things you need to know as you're starting. All right, so the way to record these expenses in QuickBooks is with a journal entry. And I am just gonna pop up a screenshot of the journal entry um, while I'm talking right now, um, because if you already understand what a journal entry is and kind of the background of how to make the accounts, but you just wanna know exactly what the journal entry looks like, um, this is what it looks like, so that can save you some time as well. But if you're newer and you want to know the background of how to make this, and what goes into it, then definitely keep watching. And I did wanna let you guys know that if you are someone who is just starting out your bookkeeping business, I have a class that helps you start your business in 30 days. So I give you three action steps each week for a month, for four weeks, and at the end of it, your business will be open and ready to start accepting clients. So I used to only open this class every so often, like every like quarter or so, but now I've set it up on a new platform so it is open all the time. So I'm hoping that's helpful to you guys so you don't have to wait to sign up, but you can just get it whenever you're ready to start. And if you're still kind of undecided about bookkeeping, then ch also check out my masterclass that talks about is bookkeeping right for you. And of course, I'll link all that information down in the description box. All right, so to record these expenses that were bought on someone's personal card out of the personal bank account instead of the business bank account, we're gonna do a journal entry. So a journal entry is just how, to, it's like a way to record things that are coming basically outside of the bank account. It's like money coming in or out of the business from the owner. And there's a couple other times you would use it as well, but that is how we're using it today. And to make this journal entry, you can see that we use two lines and we have to deal with two different accounts from the chart of accounts. Check out my video about that if you don't know what the chart of accounts is. So first we're gonna go quickly into the chart of accounts and create those accounts or, you know, QuickBooks comes loaded with a chart of accounts. So it's perfectly fine to use the accounts that are already in there or you can make your own as well. All right, so I'm here in the sample company. As a reminder, when you go to the gear in your QuickBooks Online Accountant, you can find this sample company to play around with. Just note, it does not save your work though. So if you want to practice bookkeeping, you might need to find other options. All right, so first of all, like I mentioned, we're gonna create our accounts. So we start by going to accounting and then chart of accounts, and then that's gonna bring up our accounts. And we're gonna start with the expense account. So this is a big list of all the accounts you're using to categorize stuff. And you can see the type is really important right here. So we're gonna go down until we find all the expense accounts. And I'm just gonna look at what's already in here. I haven't actually looked at this yet. All right, so in this example, we're gonna say that you just bought a computer for $1,000 for your business and you use your personal money. So you can see that there is one here called office expenses which might be applicable, or um, you can really call it anything you want. You could also call it like new technology or you could call it business startup costs. Um, I'm gonna create a new account that is called um, office furniture. All right, so to make a new chart of account, make a new account, I just go to new, and then it's not a bank account, it is an expense account. And then this detail type isn't super important. Um, I'm just gonna say other business expenses, and then I'm gonna call it office furniture. And then if you wanted it to be a sub account, you could, we could put it, we could nestle it under um, office supplies, maybe, or office expenses, it's called. Just have to remember that we did that. All right, so then if you scroll down here, we could find it in the expenses. Right here, okay, so this is the account we're gonna use in our journal entry later. And I just wanted to give you a quick heads up about why I might choose office furniture. So that um, comes into play with depreciation. So with our example for a computer specifically, that is an item that will depreciate or it will lose its value over time. So maybe you bought the computer for $1,000 
and then the next year it goes down in value, right? So if you wanted to sell it, it would only be worth $800. So that's an $800 asset to your business. So it doesn't, it's not as much as when you first bought it. So a lot of accountants I've worked with, they want to group all of the office furniture because all of the office furniture is a depreciated, those are all depreciated things. And so we group those together so that they can easily find them. So whereas it doesn't technically matter like what the name of your expense account is, that is just what I would personally use like for the systems that I created with my accountants. Um, there's a lot of like, I'm not an expert on depreciation. I usually work with a CPA on that. So make sure you check with someone who knows what they're doing if that is something that the business needs to do. There's a lot of, there's a few different kinds of depreciated assets and different formulas you need to take into account. But basically for our purposes, just make sure it's an expense account. All right, and the second kind of account you're gonna to need to create is an equity account along with that expense account. And so an equity is used just anytime the owner um, either puts money into the business or takes it out of the business. So their owner's salary, their owner's draw, will also be an equity account as well when you get to that point in your business. An equity account should be used anytime the owner is putting money in or taking money out of the business. So for example, when the owner takes a paycheck later, we are gonna use an equity account also. All right, so you can see what equity accounts are already in here, just an open balance and then a retained earnings. So we're gonna create a new one again. It's not a bank account, it's a equity. And I'm gonna say partner's contributions or personal expense would be good also. All right, and again, you can call this really whatever you want, whatever you're gonna to remember to use and what you're gonna to remember to track. Um, I'm going to say owners, or you could even say the person's name, like Joe's um, startup contributions. And then I'm not gonna make this a sub account this time. And maybe if you have multiple partners that need to be reimbursed, you could um, put them in different accounts with the with you know their names labeled on it. Um, from like a tax standpoint or from like a really basic reporting standpoint, you do not need to do that as long as it's an equity account and it's coming in or out of equity, it doesn't matter. But if you for your own personal record keeping, if you want to keep it straight, then you can label it however you want. So I'm gonna do Joe's startup contributions. And then you can see it appeared here in the equity right here. Okay, so those are the two accounts we're gonna use. I have to remember what they are. All right, so now that we have created our accounts, now we're actually gonna go and make the journal entry. So you just go to the little plus sign in the top left-hand corner, and you, so that's time, anytime you want to create something new. So you go to the plus and then find journal entry on there, and it will pull up this screen to create a new journal entry. Here is our journal entry and it just has today's date, which is fine for our purposes. All right, and we are going to use debits and credits. So we're going to debit the expense account. Um, and our expense account was called office furniture. So you just start typing it and it comes up and I said it was $1,000. And um, it does take a little practice to kind of figure out the debits and credits. Um, let me know in the description box if you have good tricks for that. But, um, you know, just rely on sources like this when you're starting out for that. And eventually you kind of like get the grasp of it. I still have to like kind of like think it through sometimes, but um, it does start to make more sense the more you do it. All right. So we have our expense account and then we have our liability account, which was Joe's um, this one. And then it knows that you're going to credit the um, that, that um, equity account. All right, so that's all you have to do for that journal entry. And you just say save and close or save and new. All right, so now the journal entry is created. So technically you could stop there. Sometimes depending on the situation or when you're first starting out, especially it's good to go into QuickBooks and see what happened with that journal entry because that journal entry is affecting your books. And don't forget that you cannot see those equity accounts or liability accounts on your profit and loss. So that is only for income and expenses. So anytime you want to see like the balance of your bank accounts, like your credit cards, if you have any loans um, and your equity, make sure you're checking the balance sheet. And that is a question that often owners have when they're just starting out is um, how can I see how much money I have taken out like for my own salary? 
and you need to make sure that they understand that that's not listed on the profit and loss. So their bottom line, say they, you know, for the month, maybe they've made $7,000, but they've taken out 5,000 in their own salary, then they need to understand that concept. So we'll hop back into QuickBooks and I'll show you how everything looks in our QuickBooks file now. All right, so under the reporting tab, you can see um, tons of different reports you can pull. Um, first, we're gonna look at the profit and loss and see that expense come out because now your computer was an expense to your business. So it helps you track and see how much money you're spending as well as it's deductible during tax time. So you can see this company is making um, their income at the top, actually um, it's right here, $8,000 and this time period is for this year only. And then we can go down and see this office furniture right here, that computer, it was $1,000. You can also click on it if you wanna see, you know, eventually there'll probably be more startup costs or more office furniture things in there, but you can click on it and then see this, this journal entry we made. And then you can even click into it further and you can edit it if you need to. All right, and then we're gonna go to a new report, the balance sheet, as I mentioned. That's where you need to go to find all of your assets and liabilities. All right, so you have all your assets, you have your liabilities and equity, and here is that, Joe's startup contributions right here, um, $1,000 for our laptop. So that is exactly right. If you were here and you saw like this was a negative, you might need to look into that or same on the profit and loss statement if you weren't finding it, if it didn't show up or um, if it was not, it was, if it was a negative when you needed it to be a positive, that might be a sign that you need to change your journal entry. Don't forget to check out my class in the description box below. It's currently $150 if you want to start your bookkeeping business as well as that masterclass is booking bring right for you. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you stayed to the end, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Bye.